but the prayers themselves. Particularly the prayers for the divine couple's confidential service. Are personally directed to Srimrati Rupa Manjari's lotus feet. Read again, please. Just a lot of moons. Yeah, she couldn't find it. Srimrati Rupa Manjari. She's the personification of the mellow of service. And she is the leader of all the maid servants of Sri Radha. <coughs> she has a most intimate friendship with Tulasi Manjari. In his Sva Sankalpa Prakasha Stotra, Sri Dasa Goswami shows the desire to learn expertise in all kinds of devotional service. From the eight girlfriends of Sri Radhika, but the prayers themselves, particularly the prayers for the Divine Couple's confidential service, are personally directed to Srimrati Rupa Manjari's lotus feet. <coughs> so we can clearly understand from the words of Baba the position of Rupa Manjari. She is the leader of all Manjaris and her position with Radhika is so close so actually she is trans uh, she is giving the services to all other Manjaris. She is teaching them how to do these services. And it's very clear that the relationship between Rupa and Rati or Tulasi Manjari is so close. And what does it mean? That we need the closeness if we want to learn something. The more person is close to the teacher, he can absorb his teachings in his heart and in his heart affection. So this closeness is very important and it should be without any hidden motives. Because in the moment when hidden motives appears, conscious or unconscious, this closeness cannot be so strong. Closeness requires open heart and open mind. This kind of persons, they can talk then with the eyes, they can talk with the movements, they don't have to speak at all. We call, I don't know, in Western country, sometimes telepathy. It's a psychological term, but when two persons are very, very close, they can talk, exchange their minds, words, thoughts, feelings, and everything. And I just remember now, when I have been in Australia 
You know these people who are Aborigines? Yeah. Aborigines. They are Aborigines. They are very expert in this telepathy between each other. And one Western scientist who was investigating, researching and what's going on, how it works and so on, he said, how are you are doing this? And why we Westerners cannot do this? And he said, for us it's very easy. But for you, it's almost impossible. Why? Because you have so many lies. Well, lies. Pretensions. Pretensions lie. You're always lying something to yourself and always lying to the others. Open your secret. So, it was the answer actually which <laughs> it was which impressed me and I started from that day a long time ago to think about this actually, how we, much we need the pure heart and pure thoughts pure mind if we want to really communicate with full love with someone so then I read a few years ago how Ananta Das Babaji is being is speaking how much is important to exchange the toads with the chariots. But for exchanging the toads and heart with the chariots, to feel what they are feeling, what they are thinking, we need the pure heart. So this is the key secret for close relationship with spiritual master with other Acharyas also to always be simple open, humble without any hidden motives of course Rupa Manjari and Rati Manjari they are eternal, liberated, pure souls but through their example they are showing what is necessary what is our goal? No. And it, they are showing another point, that this perfection is possible only through the exchange of spiritual identities. <laughs> so, we can see here that Raghunath is praying to other Sakis to teach them different other services which are necessary but he specially offer his prayers to Rupa Manjari to teach him the details of Nikunjasi we are our own they are together they exchange their different amorous pastimes and it's very necessary to exactly know what to do in particular time because they are, there is no one who will tell you that <coughs> they are completely in ecstasy they are intoxicated with each other and it must be very silent and all maid servants actually are just like a shadow are moving in the kunja doing their picking up broken garlands picking up broken necklaces uh, cleaning, giving the water refreshing them and they are doing just you know, with the movements of their bodies and they just exactly know what to do and they're ordering I mean this is not maybe harsh word but they are ordering to each other like this what to do yeah. to do something to do this to do this that. so this is for me silent seva and who can do this silent seva only someone who is embodiment of seva. Mm. Seva. it means that 
It's all consciousness, all emotions, all existence. It's just for the loving self. There is no even whiff of personal desire. So, when we listen this explanations, then maybe some doubt can appear in our heart. It will not be possible never for me. It will never be possible for me to do this. But actually, Baba is giving the key. Connect your heart with those who are already in that position. You will not, you cannot learn by yourself. You cannot learn this kind of secrets for others who are not in that position. But you have to open completely your heart, all your existence to the persons who are already in that position. And this is Rupa, so the Rupa Mandir is next to Radharani, Rati Mandir is next to Krishna. No, no, both of them are always uh, on the side of them. They are always, they are Radhika's maid servants. The Radhika's Shadola, Rupa Mandir. Rupa Mandir, yes. They have a little bit different nature. They have a little bit different nature. Rati Manjar is a little bit mild, more mild. And Rupa Manjar is like a leader, she has to be a little bit stronger. But the point is that the both of them and all other Manjaris are completely dedicated to the Lord. Sometimes Rupa Manjar, because she is older, she comes on the Krishna side mm. to give the pleasure for the seva, to give the place for the seva for the younger girlfriend. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, he established this Rupa Muga line because he knows that Manjari Bhav can be learned only from someone who is leader And then he gave instructions to Rupa what to do. And then he also gave instructions to Rabbi. But the real relationship between Raguna and Rupa is the relationship between the Sakra and the spiritual master. And this is a very important point. <coughs> this is very important point because it's very often said the Guru has a very big Task which he has to do. And very often he is covering many fields. He is covering with his teaching many fields. But disciple who knows the Baba, the mood of the Guru, is the proper disciple to whom we have approach, who have to approach and learn from him, because he will extract <coughs> all the teachings of his guru and give to us. If we just approach to Rupa Goswami, this is example, perfect example. So many Bhavas he is explaining, and sometimes it's not clear, especially for Melchus, who is really here. And if we know even who is he, how to apply this Manjali Bala? Because he is not speaking or writing deep details about that. But his disciple, Raghunath, he is speaking about details 
how to attain Manjari Bhav in this book belongs to Sama This is manual. Manual for Manjari Bhav. How to understand, how to develop proper feelings, but also how to realize. Because this book is practical book for realization of Manjari And it's not because only it is only a book, because in this book is full potency of mercy of Raghuna. So everyone who is listening, thinking about his words, who is talking, who is reading, meditating, he is coming in connection with and his heart. That's the point. And from his heart, blessings are coming to us, beginners. Yeah. This is the key. His or her? His or her. I'm picking his, Raghunath, but yes, because he is Tulsi So we should always know that Raghunath, in one sense, is a Sadaka Vesh like Raghunath. And Tulsi Manjari. It's a nickname, a sweet nickname which Radhika gave to us. Very confusing, it can be given like two people. Yeah. But it's one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is normal. So many Anas in the world are. So many Petras are in the world. But who knows which Petra is his best friend, his parent, his uh, friend, his lover, that Petra. So it's not only the point of the name, but the person. Which is because of Buddha. Raghunath the Tulsi Manjari. Yes, Raghunath. Yeah. His Rati Manjari, Radhika, gave him the name Tulsi. You are my Tulsi. This is a nickname. Two names. Two names. Rati Manjari and Tulsi Manjari. And who knows how many are Tulsi? Because your, your father is calling you. In so many ways, isn't it? Like your official name, and sometimes, you know, like a affectionate, affectionate name. Yeah. So this is the same thing in between relationship where in between Radhika and Majaris. You know, they are sometimes joking and calling each other some other affectionate names, but this is normal. O Saki Rupa Manjari. When the divine couple completes their erotic battle in Cupid's assembly, their bodies meet in sleep. When will I, on their order, quickly approach them? And eagerly <laughs> and eagerly serve them <laughs> by moving a fan of flowers <laughs> Oh moon faced girl. <laughs> When the divine couple becomes eager for love making, once more on their bed of flowers in a kunja full of hummingbees, Will I be able to please them? By 
by blissfully preparing garlands. Kunkuba. Honey wine and betel leaves for them. In his Paralthana Giti, Srila Narottama Dasa Thakura has described how the practicing devotee who attains perfection in his made servanthood this is called Sadhana Siddha Kinkari is introduced to the divine couple by Sri Rupa Manjari. <coughs> when will my master Bhakti Goswami take me along and submit me? <coughs> Take me along and submit me to Sri Rupa, Goswami or Manjari's lotus feet. When will that blessed moment come? When Sri Rupa Manjari will look at me and call me this new maidservant, quickly ordering me, O Dasi, come here, quickly get the paraphernalia for your service. My heart will be filled with joy. When she orders me like this, and I will do my service with a pure heart. I will keep my paraphernalia for service on a jeweled plate. Fill up a golden pitcher with scented water and quickly come before Radha and Krishna. When will Narottama Dasa attain that state? So here we hear the education of becoming a Like we have also in this human life some education. We go to kindergarten, then we go to the main school. And while we are learning how to write and to read in all elementary things, later there comes the high school. And after that comes university, PhD. So we know that in all kinds of educational fields, it is we're required to be more and more trained in the expertise of that certain field. <coughs> For example, we want to become a doctor. In kindergarten and in the main school, all kids are together and they are playing and learning the general things. Later on, those who want to become trained in one field, they need one professor in that field, one doctor who will teach them. And then they come to the practical rooms. They go to the hospitals. So we see that the education requires specification. We start with a general teachings 
like we go to kindergarten and we are playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take us with you. Take us with you. Have a good journey. Take some mercy. I will I will be I will be I will so when we have this education, in the beginning it's a game, like in kindergarten, you know, in Germany now we have this carnival, you know, carnival, it's like a game. And what happens in that time? Everybody dresses up like someone. I want to be a policeman. Oh, I want to be a princess. I want to be a doctor. Yeah, Halloween, you know, monster. I want to be a soldier, you know, so many forms and, and like costumes and it's a game. So in kindergarten, we are like this, I want to be, I want to be. And we play roles and we try to, you know, have fun with these roles. But later when we come to school to learn and to write, then we need to learn how to sit in one place. <laughs> and that is very difficult for the, the students in first grade. They want to still play and jump around, but teacher says, no, sit down and put the letter A in your little book, and you get nice pencils, you know, it's in a playful way. So in the same way, we come here, by our good fortune, by some mercy, to Vrindavan. When we enter the gates of Munga Mandya, often we are still in this kindergarten mood, right? Oh, Gurudev, I'm this, I'm that. And Gurudev says, who are you? Yeah, I'm this and that, I do this and that, I like to be. And Gurudev, very merciful. But after some time, when, you know, some training has been there, we are practicing, chanting, and try to be of service. And then Gurudev says, no, you cannot jump around anymore. No. Do your mantras. Sit down, become quiet, listen. Not try to always be in the role of what you think you are, what you want to be. <laughs> you learn how to read and write and listen from the Goswamis and what is really your destination. There's a soul. So these are the, the different stages in our education and also we hear about education. Uh, the dasi bhav, the, the mood and the expertise to serve Radha Mohan in different, different situations according to the feelings and desires they have. And Rupa Manchari is, so to say, professor of this field. And she gives different, different training fields to those who have been applied for or trained by their spiritual teachers. Like Lokanath Goswami, his teacher of Naratondas Thakur. So Lokanath Goswami prepared Naratam Dastakwa how to, how to meditate and serve as a Dasi, as a Mencha. So there are different teachers who will train different, different fields of expertise. And in the beginning we don't know. 
we are trying to play the roles of this material world because that is what we have learned or we have been used to. But when we come to the spiritual practice and training, then our teachers, according to our <coughs> sincerity, expertise, and yeah, also the ability to listen, Rudy was explaining that yesterday. It's so important to be able to listen and absorb. But the kids, what they do, they always say, listen to me. Mama, Papa, listen to me. But the, in the spiritual training and education, it's so, you know, so big in importance to be able to listen. Guru will also li listen to us to make a connection, to make this bond of love, to, you know, to let us feel we are really loved and guided. We have been accepted. But at one point, this also needs to go to another step, to another level. And when it comes to the level of higher education in spiritual life, then we get the higher initiations into that field. And that happens by listening, by observing, and also by, like you explained so nicely, yeah, uh, God and listening, non-verbal communication. Just sitting to, together and listen, listening to the lines between the words, or to the non-spoken feelings. And then when Guru sees that some disciples very, really serious, they want to go deeper and deeper in the inner worlds of Bhajan, in the inner realms of the heart, the soul, then he will help us and train us more. And once, when Guru was still teaching down here in this room, in giving classes, he was speaking so much that I'm waiting for you. But where are you? Why don't you come? Because what is <coughs> the truth is like you said, Shankaya, that we have a external bodily identity. We are here in this world. You are Shankaya. I am Sumati. But I, you know, we have another. We have another level of existence. A complete new world that needs to be like researched and felt and revealed to us by the mercy of Radha Mohan, through the mercy of Rudi. And he also has, like you said, he and she together. So that field needs to be uh, how do you say, opened up to us in a way we need the mercy. But if, if I'm still jumping around thinking I'm a policeman and I want to be a princess, I'm still in kindergarten. I, I cannot receive that, that education that is needed to serve Radha Mohan. I, I need to come out of the, the jumping mood of a little child who likes to have many identities and try many things in this world. And I'm just... I just, I just felt, yeah, this is the process. We are listening to this. The, the spiritual master is preparing the disciples according also to the disciples' ability to listen and practice their ABCs. And for that we need to sit still. 
when it comes to Rindavan to be mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. in a way. We do services, we have loving exchanges. <coughs> but really, to sit next to our teacher and teach us, I'm not only talking good, we are also teaching each other, right? We are helping each other. And listen. So these vibrations that go in, to go into the service of you know real internal service to the divine couple internal and external can become one it's not that at one point we just sit and do nothing but the point is also while I'm doing services here what is my meditation what am I You know, contemplating. Am I still in the kindergarten? No, oh, I want to do this. Yeah? But now I'm here in Vrindavan. Like Gurudev often says, you have to be in Vrindavan. <coughs> feel Vrindavan. Am I still in this, my old job, my family, and this and that? Or am I here? Am I in home accepting the training of the soul? That is always what I try to remind myself and I really um, pray also to Vrindavan, to Radha Mahan, to Gurdjie, that it will happen, that it also, I can listen more, I can absorb, see, to come here to, to really learn my final lesson. And not be in the kindergarten room, jumping around externally, really receive the mercy of Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, who are trying to help us to be prepared. And Gurudev wants to prepare us to go to them, to serve them. But I have worked in the kindergarten, and I know how you know, children are, they are very active. And it's sometimes difficult to let them sit and read a book or you know, listen, because they want to talk all the time. So my mind is also like that, always talking, always active. <laughs> But Gurudev is like very merciful, taking the hands of the children who we are, Uh, trying to make us still to go inside and waiting for us there. Sometimes, yeah, he said, I'm waiting for you, but where are you? I'm waiting there for you. Try to feel me there, try to be there, try to uh, go deeper. So when Gurudev looks at us, he is also looking through us, through this you know, body and roads, as you wisely explained, to go deeper no? in these levels of inner relationships. I just want to say, this inner relationship that Sujini just said, it starts with the listening. It's really, if we want relationship with someone, you should be open to listen. Otherwise, how will you be ever close to it? How will we understand that person? How we will feel that person? But if we are just with someone, And waiting when he will stop to talk. I now want to speak. <laughs> so it's okay in the kindergarten. <laughs> this perfectly matches in the kindergarten. It's required for the kindergarten. But if someone after 30 years say you, you are still in the kindergarten, then you see that you are not a child anymore. And then anger is coming out. Ego is coming out. And devotee who spent so many years in the kindergarten cannot honestly say to himself, now I really have to start from the beginning. To start to write a letter A. But I know so many things. 
I know so many verses. I know so many of the books. I know so many things, even better than you. And now I have to sit to be fixed in one place and to start to meditate. This is a crucial point for each of to say, I don't know. I'm the beginner. Because and many things which I know are actually obstacles. And we can we all know this example. When someone comes to the music teacher, first thing when music teacher is asking, do you know to play violin? Yes, five years I'm playing. Okay, next one. Because you cannot teach someone who thinks that he knows. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. It's impossible. Impossible. Almost impossible. You will spend so much energy with that person. This is a materialistic person. Example, but Gurudev is very, very merciful, but we should not misuse this person. <coughs> so we should learn to listen and listen and listen. And through this listening, closeness will come. Closeness will never come if we are not able to properly listen. With full heart. Open heart. <coughs> In the, the previous sentence, I will keep my paraphernalia for service <coughs> on the jeweled plates. <coughs> Which plate? A jeweled plate. plate. A decorated plate. Fill up a golden pitcher with scented water. <coughs> And quickly come before Radha and Krishna. When will Narottama Dasa attain that state? I will shyly stand behind Sri Rupa as Radha and Krishna and look at me again. Smile and ask Rupa with kind hearts. Oh Rupa, where did you get this new maidservant? Hearing their inquiry, Sri Rupa Manjari then tells them, Manjulali Manjari. This is the spiritual name of Srila Mukamata Goswami. Manjulali Manjulali Manjari has given me this maidservant to bring her before you. Knowing her to be very humble, I kept her there to serve you. After telling them she will engage Narottama Dasa in their service. So the attitude to this last <coughs> synthesis is described. Attitude is very important of anyone who wants to become disciple. <coughs> because through proper attitude, he is able to receive the <coughs> Attitude is not so good 
teachings will not properly come into his heart and all his consciousness. So we can see here how humbled is a new manja in the presence of her leader manja, guru manja, and in the presence of rupa manja in front of Radha. So, to be humble in such a way, we should learn here in Sadaka. And Krishna. And they are looking, they are watching. Rupa Manja is there. And Guru Manja is bringing Guru Manja. And representing. This is a very nice Please accept mm-hmm. Yes. So this is the process of acceptance of now new manja. This is the process. And this process we are practicing also in Sadaka. To be humble, to be simple, without proud, because if we are not trained here, what should we do there? Make a mess. Actually, no one will allow us to come. So we are practicing here in our sadhaka but in the same time we are trying to develop our spiritual identity, spiritual emotions, spiritual consciousness of the homeless. And the more this spiritual consciousness is in developing, it reflects automatically on sadhaka. A guru who is expert at seeing, <coughs> hearing, he can see that just from appearance of the person, how much he is practicing his inner sadhana, inner bhakti. For someone who is expert, it's very, very obvious and visible. From all things, how he sleeps, how he walks, everything is invisible. And then we would have said, yeah, your body is so, so deep. Not so deep. Do something. Ah, yes, yes. Some days before, there was a question from one devotee how to meditate on the Leelas. How to meditate on the Leelas. And she asked, Can I go really into the Leela as a mandarin and do the service? I understood, yes, do this. But this is before this stage. Before we come to Radha Mohan, we try to do this service in our mind, as a, in our heart, in the wish. We do that we, that we are still mandatory and we do that like we are accepted. <laughs> yeah, the question is how to do smarada, how to go inside. And Gurudev actually also yesterday he gave explanation when he speak about listening. <laughs> listening and remembering those hand in hand. So it's not artificial that 
I try to imagine anything. It is what I have heard from my Guru Day, from my Guru Manjari, and what I remember in my heart. For example, Guru Day says, we are listening this year now. No? Every day we are listening to Lapakushma. So when I go in my room, in my meditation, in my bhajan, I remember what I have heard. And for example, as I am chanting, I remember Naratanga he got introduced by his Guru Majali, Manjulali Manjali. And they were sitting in one room in the Sukunja with Mala and Moha. And my mind immediately also produces some pictures with that. And I can imagine, you know, how will the Kunj look also when the beautiful flowers? And there are these beautiful, beautiful girls. They are helping each other to be servants of Srimadiratika. And you can also, while you remember that, like it was said, the golden plate, full of jewels. How oh, does it look like? Wow, and then you can imagine that plate. And also at the same time, pray, oh, when will I be able to? My Guru Mantra give me a plate that I can put a cup of water or drink. That is what Guru is recommending, that what we hear, we meditate on this. And we remember the situation, because many Leelas have different situations. But today, right now, and here, we have this situation. And Radha and Mohan, they are sitting on a very beautiful couch or whatever, bed. That is not said, but that is possible to remember any way you want. But there is this... You know, other mandaris, when one is introduced, and they have a beautiful, beautiful plates and cups, and she is first time coming in front of them. She has this jewel plate, and Guru Manjari is telling her, do this, do that, which is full of beautiful jewels or whatever. So we remember that. And then that time we are chanting. And then that time we try to keep the pictures in the hearts we have listened. And that is the result of listening. That these pictures, they come inside of the heart and it can be like a memory that will be always there. <coughs> and the, the, the Leela or the services are different, different situations that are painted in our hearts every day by listening. And also, if we are very expert in listening, and there are many pictures there already, there will be situations where <laughs> Gurudev give also special service to us. That is, for example, when we have gotten our Swaru, our identity, our name, from Gurudev, then also every day I meditate, oh, my name is so and so Mother. My skin is that color. Then also that is a preparation every day for our everyday services. So the meditation is is coming in different different uh, uh, how do you say forms. But usually Gurudev always says, remember what we have read. Remember and go into it deeply. Like for example, today we are reading this and my desire to become stronger, to be 
also accepted by group my guru mandarin and she will bring me to the garden of my heart in this situation and my prayers can be like this or oh, would it when you see the day that Finally, we can meet there also. We are already together here. That is very beautiful. But my great unfortunate is that I am still in the kindergarten room. I am still jumping, trying to be a princess. In this world. So, would you please, you know, and this can go hand in hand. It's the prayer, the yearning, and this is what we have heard. And every day there's different situations what we do. And it's always mercy. And then if some questions come, we can ask our brothers and sisters. And we can go good in. We try to scratch good in. That is also some kind of mercy that comes. And that's why we always try to get good in response and input. We need this. Because he or she will give this higher realization. And when we listen to this realization and we internalize it in my heart and repeat it in my heart, then some, something will also come up. You know, by itself. Then revelation will come. And then I can go to Guru. Oh, I have this in this meditation. Is this correct? Is this what do you feel? And then Guru will guide us. This is the guidance. But first we start with what we hear and listen every day. No? Agreed? Yeah, of course, because this is not the easiest way for us to listen. We were listening so beautifully, seeing practically. It's enough for one month of meditation. position do I remember that I'm observer of all this? Or if I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there. No, no, from outside. My position is always to be a little bit behind of my group. Not in front, immediately. So meditation is I'm looking, I'm listening what they are doing. Observing. Observing. But not in your, in your human, you're also a little girl there. Yeah, you're a little girl. You're sitting with your older girl, one day older girl, <laughs> girlfriend nearby, and she's your best friend. She's your best friend. There is no anyone who is my friend and close like she is. So this is the beginning how we can make closeness first close. Not immediately rather Krishna. <coughs> Maybe someone has such kind of realizations, such kind of levels, and that's perfectly right. According to Guru Dev's construction, he is going. But this is general, like Suniti just says, the beginning stage of meditation. If I receive through mercifully, then I'm trying to. First, identify myself, find this and that, and then, and then my guru is this, 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 this. If we are not absorbing these two identities, actually, my identity, guru mantra, how are you? This is speculation. This is concoction. Yesterday we were reading, actually. Don't make your own concoction. Just follow the words, emotions of Acharyas. Follow. And for us, it's very difficult to follow. We're jumping. We are jumping. How can we make stable? Stable. If we have desire, then automatically fixation will go will come. If we don't have a desire, if we have a desire, but there is some thing that pulls you If we have strong desire to 
So it is just a study process was from Kitten Garden to the hospice of the you know, so I have a goal. I want to be a doctor. Many obstacles are coming. Many of my friends are saying, are you crazy? You want to, to work with so many sick people. You find some more light work. You know. But I want to be a doctor. Despite of all obstacles. So this is fixation. Which is coming from but if it's not clear, that is a problem. And Gurudev is saying, be fixed, be fixed, be fixed. And we say, yes, yes, I am fixed. It's very hard. Yeah, because there is no desire. Yeah, because there is no desire. The answer is very easy, actually. It must be strong desire. It must be, yeah. It must be strong desire. So, Raga Bhakti, spontaneous Bhakti, normal Bhakti, actually, is starting from that point. I want it. And I'm burning from desire for that. I'm burning for desire to become doctor. And I know how many things I have to level steps I have to pass, but I'm burning, and this burning of my desires gives me strength, despite the difficulties, despite even my difficulties. And the same thing we are listening here, how Raghunath is burning from desire to be, be with Radhika. And no one else can satisfy <coughs> <coughs> Just uh, mm. yeah. and other manjas. Burning desire. Yes. 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 And yesterday also I remember very uh, how good it very sweetly also the beginning. He says that uh, when a disciple come very close to him and have this burning desire in the heart and can listen and make everything clear, then also Gurudev will reveal what is their service to Radha. And then from there, we have different meditations. Now we are learning how to meditate. And how by listening, these things become so spectacular that we become very curious. Good, it can give to me, can, can empower me, can make me qualified, because he is already she. Can I also be in this, you know, service? And then uh, slowly, slowly, the relationship between brothers and sisters, and Good and Madam, it gets a flow of a natural liking and deep attachment. And then when this comes, then also it's not only about me, 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 me. Could it be for you? And what is your service? What would you like me to do? <coughs> it's not all oh, good if I want this and good if how I, you know, all these things that are so related to the ego. So just the survival here in this material world. This is also good. It's a level. Rudy is very merciful. He helps all of us with our life, <coughs> with our families, with our relationships. Actually, we're waiting until we enter a spiritual family with Radha And then also these things, what you ask, uh, they will be clear in the heart. Now these are theoretical questions. How to do 
who am I, how to feel this. But by listening, <coughs> meditating and praying, <coughs> it will reveal to you. <coughs> by Gurdjieff's mercy, when you <coughs> sit with this in your heart, in front of Guru, and you're meditating, chanting, praying, begging, then the Gurdjieff's heart will melt because he can <coughs> feel <coughs> us <coughs> beyond our words. He can read our hearts and eyes. But if we are still like in kindergarten trying to be the roles of the carnival, he will just say, okay, go and play your carnival role. Mm -hmm. Right? As, uh, because that he sees that this is a level. But when I, I become more deep and I, I want to be who I am in my relationship to Guru Mantra and to Radha Mohan and also Guru will feel like also she will help us. And then it becomes like a, a new perspective. But we are always the gods. Like I said to Guru once, what did I ask him? How, how, how big I am? In I think, sometimes I think Radha Mohan are very small because I cannot see them, you know, from distance or something, from this external being. Oh, now, Good if answer was yeah. if you are big, <laughs> and he says if you become smaller, <laughs> they become very big. <laughs> so you understand this was a very uh, deep hint. <laughs> if I think I am very big, <laughs> it means material body, material <laughs> mind. <laughs> Then Radha Mahan looks like a statue, small. I cannot see them. I want to see them with the material eyes. But if I become very small girl, and they are, they are really growing, because I can feel them more from the perspective of their yeah, heart, and also from, I am small, they are big. And then I don't think how I can see them with this senses. Can you please appear in front of me in a way that I can understand who you are from my spiritual senses? Where I am very small and you are very big. So that change is interesting. It is not only in front of Radha or in front of any other devotees. That's true. Yes. 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 And you could try to learn more from them. Every step or what they you always think that we are smaller than the other person. We don't know anything. We have to learn every day. Yeah, then we can learn, right? If if I am running then around with more. such a big ego and I think I am bigger than everyone else, then how to learn? Or I can say to everybody else. I have to tell always my stories because I know so much. I'm living in my stories and I have to tell the world, right? Because the world has to know my stories. It's very important. But actually it's the other way around. Like Prashantbaya was nicely explained. And uh, that is also the beauty of the Indian culture that I feel when I come here. Everyone is more in their souls and they respect all other souls and they always know you are here teaching me how can I receive from you and then actually I'm more closer to my uh, constitutional position who I am I'm small I want to listen from you what is Rani telling to me through you how can I receive from you and see you as a divine you know soul you are as the divine messenger you are. So that is a different perspective than the other one where I think I am so big, I know everything, and how can I manage this temple, I have to manage this and that, and how to... No, no, what is Radharani and Guru Manjali want from me today, from my little service, where's my jewel today? today. And that is very interesting uh, change of perspective that is happening here in Vrindavan, if we are lucky.
That's what I pray for, that I can always change my perspective. You know, because this other perspective of, of what Guru calls in Sanskrit, Purusha Ba, I can do it, I am the one who is you know, controlling. That is very natural. This is the natural evil. But this other service. You know, Seva Ras, Mantra is a personification of Seva Ras. Then it's every day, oh Radharani, what is up today? What is my service? Guru Mantra, how can I feel you? Without even, you know, listening your voice. How can, you know, please speak to me. Can I listen to you today? Can I hear you? In my heart? Can I hear you? In my heart? So we came to the point that we need, we need our own desire to be humble. If we don't really understand how this false ego proudness, our false identification is great obstacle, then we do not develop desire to be humble. To be humble. humble is not I want to be humble, just expression because I heard. No, I really need if I really want to attain that goal. Desire, strong, burning desire to be humble. I cannot be I cannot free myself from ego, but also I want to be humble because it's so necessary for my spiritual life. And I please, I beg everyone, come, give me blessings, give me mercy to be humble. Don't care every moment. Every moment. Don't care if it hurts me. Yes. Don't be so kind and don't care if I am angry. Help me. But if we're just speaking, is that we want to be humble or we are imitating humbleness? No, this is some kind of cheating. But if someone really wants to attain goals, he voluntarily. On the problem. wants to be free from all obstacles mm -hmm. which block it. Mm -hmm. In Naratanda Stakur is writing here how Radhika uh, told him, please give me your golden uh, jeweled plate with a different paraphernalia. In Sadaka it means, please give me your, your heart to become gold, golden heart, with full paraphernalia of your pure, your emotions, your love, your attitude, your humbleness, your kindness. This is first play, and then this play will tr be transformed in the golden jewel play, which can be offered to them. It's a walker here. There's a jar. Yeah, golden pitcher with golden pitcher. The center, yeah. So, so those, yes. So we we should be aware what we really need and what is necessary and what is obstacles. And if it's obstacle, please help me to. It's not easy, I know. To my personal example, but at least we should be aware of. Otherwise, we will always blame others. So, yeah, this is also interesting how you put this together. It is actually a golden plate with jewels, a spiritual golden plate. But also for myself, how to meditate, because that was the question I can, yeah, I can also feel like, how can I open my heart that has become the jewel plate? It has become this kind of quality of, you know, gold, molten, and pure, and loving and ready to, to you know, be offered. Because in the end, that's what Gurudev is offering. He is offering our hearts to Radha So that is also true here in the human, you know, beings we are right now, offering the hearts. But it becomes another reality 
in the spiritual world because then our hearts become these trays of service with the with the scented jars you know these beautiful beautiful feelings that don't smell not the ego feelings but they smell good and then they can be offered to Radha so I like this we have a two perspectives we have something in this world and we have something in the spiritual world and they belong together at one point they become one because the meditations become very vivid and alive mm -hmm.